Hello folks, this is Ben Zoror. I am the Director of Investment Management here at MarketX, and I lead our research capacity. Today I'll be telling you about an investment that we are working on, a company called Udemy. Udemy is an e-learning platform, and what they essentially do is provide open courseware for content creators to uh, essentially create courses on their platform and allow folks like you and I to go on there and, and purchase those courses. In fact, I've done so myself and have had a tremendous experience with the platform. The other side of the business uh, is the corporate training and government training where uh, in a similar capacity, they allow corporations and governments to create content for their employees. Obviously, that you know these corporations are, are getting help from a, a Udemy team member to create this content. Uh, but they're, they're essentially able to personalize that content to upskill their employees. And so before we dig deeper into the company itself, I usually like to run folks through the industry just to get a high level overview of where the company sits within the industry and, and um, you know, what the growth of the industry looks like. And so since the turn of the century, since the year 2000, the industry has grown by about 900 percent and it's not showing any signs of slowing down. In fact, by 2025, the industry is supposed to triple in size. And there are a few trends that are driving this tremendous growth. The first is, as I mentioned earlier, the, the corporate and government e-learning uh, niche. And so as you can imagine, a lot of corporations these days and governments for that matter are looking to keep up with the innovation that's happening within our economies. And due to that, they need to upskill their employees. And so when a company like Udemy comes in and says, hey, we can do this for a uh, 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 smaller cost and make it more efficient and make it a more memorable training where their employees are, are retaining more knowledge from their trainings, uh, then obviously that's a no brainer and corporations will, will jump on that, which is what's happening. Udemy has close to 80% of the Fortune 500 companies as clients. And uh, eight of the top 10 Fortune 500 are clients. So that's a, that's a tremendous uh, feat to achieve. Uh, the other, uh, the other uh, trend that we're looking at is the innovation in the e-learning technology itself. And so what's that allowing uh, uh, e-learning companies to do is to essentially make their modules make their platforms more effective more scalable less expensive to the end user and to their corporate clients uh, and then uh, also creating a, a better experience for the end user who is learning from these courses uh, this sort of synergy of characteristics uh, is is just a overall better experience for the the corporate clients that are buying these these courses and the, the end user that is uh, taking the courses, as I mentioned earlier. And the last piece, you know, we've, we've all heard about uh, uh, COVID uh, essentially affecting businesses uh, and industries. In some industries, it's been a positive effect and in other industries, it's been a negative effect. Uh, in the e-learning industry specifically, it has been a very positive effect. And as you can imagine, everyone has been uh, uh, sort of working and, and, and learning from home. And uh, when, when that happens, uh, you know, there, there needs to be some adoption of e-learning, again, to upskill their employees as a corporation, but also for students. Uh, and, and this is, you know, billions of people that have been uh, sort of displaced from their schools and universities. Uh, they're, they're able to continue their education online. Now, the other side of that is when it comes to emerging economies also, there, there's an adoption that's happening there as well because when uh, you know a person is in a third world country and is unable to access higher level learning within their country um, and you have, um, you know, uh, for example, American universities and schools offering that learning online, uh, they no longer have to look locally for that, that, uh, that learning and they essentially could go online and, and develop those skills uh, and develop that knowledge uh, in order to achieve their, their goals, whether in life or career. And so in the near term, the market is fragmented with a number of players occupying market share. 
In the mid to long term, we see that changing and we see some players consolidating with others. And it also makes sense today geographically that there is fragmentation because there are players in specific geographies that are more localized than others and so make more sense for the end user to utilize. And so, for example, while Udemy is a global player, uh, in China, you have folks, I'm just looking at my notes here, like, and please excuse me if I mispronounce this, but uh, you have folks like uh, Zhao Yabang and uh, Yan Faudu. Uh, and then in India, you have folks like Udon and Beiju. Uh, both sets of countries have seen tremendous investment from VCs, including SoftBank and other top VCs. And uh, we're talking about billions of dollars here in investment uh, uh, and investing in, in those markets, uh, which is pretty reassuring for the overall e-learning industry as a whole, because it's telling us that it's garnering a lot of attention from sophisticated investors, prominent VCs that study their market and study their investments very well. And it's also reassuring because as you probably know, without capital, without resources, without attention and uh, sort of backing in, in a specific market, even if a company is doing extremely well, uh, it's, it's harder for a company in that specific market to scale out versus uh, a company that's in a market that is, uh, uh, you know, well capitalized, uh, well and, and well resourced. And so the geographical split as we see it today, we're seeing 40% of the uh, industry growth originating from North America. And so that's pretty tremendous. Uh, it's, it's also uh, a reason why Udemy and Coursera uh, and, and uh, the likes have been successful within the, the industry. Um, there's Obviously, Fortune 500 companies uh, with, within the Americas, there is, uh, you know, top name universities and schools within the Americas. Uh, and because of that, you know, you get the uh, effect of the e-learning that's happening in corporations and governments, uh, but you also get the effect of the e-learning that's happening from the educational, uh, traditional educational sector as well. Now, moving into the future, we see the Asia Pacific region having the highest compounded annual growth rate uh, coming in at 43%. And that's pretty important because, again, you have China and India, both that have uh, great economies, but also uh, great innovation ecosystems and are producing companies uh, that are similar to, to Udemy and Coursera in the United States. And we mentioned those companies earlier. Now, uh, in terms of overall industry growth and niches, the fastest growing niche within the industry is the corporate uh, e-learning niche. And we're expecting that to hit about a 30, uh, $30 billion valuation by 2022. So if you think about that, that niche alone can be its own market. And knowing that Udemy has a tremendous part of that corporate niche as market share is also reassuring when looking at this investment. It's very favorable because as this niche continues to grow, and again, it is the fastest growing niche within the e-learning market, uh, Udemy will continue to capture market share within that niche uh, because they have scaled out their corporate and government e-learning business extremely well. Uh, and it is, it is, uh, uh, international with a with a heavy footprint internationally. In fact, uh, we'll go into this in more detail, but the company is looking to hire folks uh, over the next few years internationally and uh, essentially localize their, uh, their uh, government and, and corporate e-learning platforms. In terms of the overall industry growth rate, we are forecasting the industry to grow at a 14% compounded annual growth rate through 2025 which if you think about where the industry was in, in 2019, they were at roughly 
uh, $200 billion in valuation, slightly over $200 billion. And uh, this means that in, in 2025, the industry is looking to get to uh, roughly $440 billion in valuation. So there's a tremendous room for growth there and a lot of market to capture for Udemy and, uh, and the likes internationally. Now, zooming into the company details, uh, the company was founded in 2009 by Aaron Bali, Gagan Biani, and Akle, sorry, Akte Kaglar. Um, a couple of these founders were named to the Forbes 30 under 30 list, which is a pretty prominent list for entrepreneurs and, and business folks overall. Uh, in terms of business lines, we had mentioned earlier that um, it, there's a sort of open course Udemy for everyone. You have Udemy for corporations and Udemy for government as well. And so operationally, the company currently boasts uh, 35 million users, 57,000 instructors that are creating content for these users, uh, and 130,000 courses. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, folks and 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 knowledge to support, and that's all supported by Udemy's close to 4,000 employees internationally. In fact, the company has a strategy uh, to hire uh, uh, a tremendous amount of employees internationally, and especially you know looking at my notes here in India, Japan, Australia. And the broader APAC region, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the APAC region is, is supposed to experience the highest growth rate in the coming years in terms of e-learning. Uh, the company is planning to increase boots on the ground uh, in, in uh, rates of uh, upwards of 50%. And so that's because the strategy for Udemy overall is to essentially localize the content and the learning experience for their end users. And that's pretty important to think about because learning isn't just um, something people do. It's, it's uh, on, on some level cultural, right? So people learn differently in different cultures. And Udemy is, uh, is recognizing that and looking to uh, essentially personalize the experience for their end users. Uh, to date, in terms of funding, the company has raised close to $300 million in, in venture funding. Uh, they were last valued in their Series C at $2 billion. Uh, in the secondaries market today and, and where they're trading uh, uh, and, and where, where this investment is, is also valued at, uh, we're looking at uh, close to $3.7 billion, uh, to be exact, $3.66 billion in terms of a, a company valuation. Uh, and that is uh, essentially eight times revenue, right? The revenue we forecasted for fiscal year 2020 is just around 450 million. In fact, it's it surpassed 450 million. Uh, and uh, the, the margin for fiscal year 2020 is around 28%, which gives us an EBITDA of uh, around $126 million. Now for the fiscal year 2021, we are forecasting around $600 million in revenue for Udemy, which gives them a revenue growth rate of around 33%. We're also expecting them to go public in 2021. Uh, and we expect, you know, large Wall Street uh, bulge bracket banks to value the company at 10 to 12 times uh, 2021 revenue guidance. Uh, and so if you look at the $600 million number that I mentioned earlier, we're seeing uh, IPO valuation uh, at around six to six point five billion dollars, and we believe that um, once the company is listed, the market cap will grow to around eight to ten billion uh, in the uh, period following the, the the listing. Now this gives us just about a three x return on today's current valuation of. $3.66 billion. And so the overall uh, investment structure, we are looking at a $10 million investment in Udemy. That's the capacity that we have. Uh, we are going to structure this in a traditional SPV uh, with a typical 220 fee structure. And so if you are hoping to learn more about Udemy, please feel free to reach out to us. 
uh, we would be more than happy to tell you more about the company and provide more details uh, about the industry company and the investment structure overall. Uh, you can reach me at ben at themarketx.com uh, or uh, you know log on to marketxventures.com and you will find a way to contact us there as well. Have a great day and uh, look forward to hearing from you.